Wednesday, October 14th, 2020, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. I've been asked this question so many times that if I uh, was given a dollar for every time it was asked, uh, I could uh, buy a really nice watch, a Swiss watch, or go on a nice holiday. And the question is, why not GLD? Uh, why don't you uh, like gold uh, ETF GLD? And hopefully today I'll put this question to rest uh, forever, <laughs> at least for my viewers. Uh, I have to thank again uh, my viewers for sending me things once in a while. And uh, uh, one of my viewers here in the UK sent me an article from 2004 uh, in the Wall Street Journal about the GLD ETF. So I'm going to reference that. I'm also going to reference an article in Forbes magazine from 2011. And I'm going to look at the uh, prospectus for GLD, for which you need a lawyer really to read it for you, if you really want to truly understand it. And even on that prospectus, uh, they say that uh, you should read the whole prospectus before deciding whether to invest in GLD. So I'm going to start out with the uh, 2004 article from the Wall Street Journal Europe. So someone here in the UK sent me that. He's actually kept uh, the, the, the physical newspaper from 2004, which is interesting. So let's first go through the Wall Street Journal uh, opinion piece or article by Hugo Dixon, and it's entitled Exchange Traded Gold Fever Rises. It's from the Breaking Views uh, section of the Wall Street Journal. This is what he says. Fundamentals outweighed by mounting speculation. Exchange traded funds are an odd way to buy into the security of gold. After all, gold is really a hedge against financial calamity. That is, against the sort of events that takes down complicated investment vehicles, well, over 30 pages, the prospectus. The new fund looks like a sign of speculative fever. No one doubts that the first gold ETF on the New York Stock Exchange which will start trading next Thursday, will be able to sell out its initial $100 million offering. Investors' interest is so high that the new product could well soon match the $650 million taken in by a similar London-listed fund. That would make the two funds together account for 3% of annual gold production. But why is gold so popular in this liquid form? It is not the harsh forces of supply and demand. On the contrary, there seems to be more of the metal available from mines, central banks, and scrap than new users want. The surplus was 16% of supply in 2003, up from 4% in 2002, according to the World Gold Council. And increasing economic sophistication is likely to reduce the demand from India and China, the biggest countries for hoarding. Cars and shares should replace gold bars and bangles as the preferred tokens of wealth. I think he was wrong about that, about the Indians and the Chinese, but uh, be as it may, let, let's uh, continue uh, reading and see wh what the Wall Street Journal was thinking about the GLD. Nor is it worries about the dollar that are giving the gold price a lift, despite what gold bulls claim. Interest earning assets in euros or yen are a much better dollar hedge than gold. Not anymore, right? <laughs> You're getting negative rates on those. Even then, gold that comes with reduced handling costs. And it can't be the usual argument of fervent gold bugs, the fear of financial Armageddon. Well, it is now, I would say, with all that's going on in the world. This article, of course, was written 16 years ago. After the great calamity, gold coins and ingots may be like, well, gold dust. And he's right. But what about electronic records of certificates in a distant financial institution? There you go. I thought that was the best statement he made about GLD. The best explanation is simply speculation. 
a gold fund is a good way for investors who should not be buying commodities to get into a hot market, but it appeals to them for much the same reason as some overpriced tech share, because it can be sold onto someone even more foolish. So even though Mr. Dixon was wrong, in my opinion, about uh, uh, the future of the gold market, because gold bugs have been right. We are going to have a financial calamity. Uh, but he was right as well about the fact that you don't want to have a GLD, which is basically a certificate of electronic records in a distant financial institution. And uh, I'd also add financial institutions that you cannot trust, I would say. So now let's go to the Forbes magazine article from 2011. Before I do that, just wanted to let you know that you can get one of these in the Teespring store. It says only physical gold and silver will slay the bullion banks. There you go. Maneco 64 mug. There. Help support the channel. Help me keep the, the message uh, coming out about the bullion banks and about the gold market. So now let's skip forward to 2011 from 2004. This is from November in Forbes magazine. Uh, this is written by a contributor, Augustino Fontevecchia. And it says, is GLD really as good as gold? Let's see what uh, Mr. Fontevecchia has to say. In 2004, the launch of the SPDR Gold Trust Exchange Traded Fund under ticker Symbo GLD leveled the playing field of gold investors by allowing for a less expensive option than buying the physical metal. Ever since, many have come to equate GLD with actually owning gold, but the reality is a bit more nuanced. GLD has grown to become the second largest exchange traded fund by assets valued at $72.4 billion and backed by 40 point million ounces of physical gold. The subject of much fascination, GLD has also been targeted by skeptics who questioned the ETF's secretive methods and even doubt it holds all the gold in HSBC's vault in London. Well, HSBC, that's a too big to fail bank, <laughs> but let's continue. Jason Tucson, the managing director and principal executive officer of World Gold Trust Services, spoke to Forbes and sought to dispel rumors by explaining how GLD works. Since GLD debuted on November 12, 2004, it has risen more than 280% to over $170 a share. The whole thesis uh, behind GLD was creating an efficient market for gold trading, explained Toussaint. The price discovery mechanism wasn't working effectively. Storage insurance and transport costs and logistics uh, problems prevented efficient markets. I disagree with uh, this guy. Uh, gold is the most marketable commodity in history, uh, and it still is. But anyway, the analog to GLD is that to buy one share of GE, I don't have to go to their sales guy. I press a button on my computer and I own it. Very convenient, right? Sometimes convenience is not the best thing, I would say. Uh, yeah, it's very convenient to go to McDonald's and uh, get a, a quick burger and fries uh, instead of going to a, a proper restaurant, sitting down, uh, calling the waiter over, looking at the menu and eating something actually that's good for you. Anyway, let's continue. Investors then are drawn to GLD because it allows them to own physical metal. Suzanne Hutchins, for example, Newton's investment manager for global funds and head of their real return investment team, which is part of Bank of New York Mellon, said they like gold as an inflation hedge in the face of currency debasement. She sees GLD as one of the ways to gain exposure to the yellow metal and likes it because it is physically backed. She told Forbes her team's been to the vault and seen the actual bars. How does GLD work? 
it's actually a lot more complicated than simply allowing investors to own gold. GLD is a trust sponsored by the World Gold Council through World Gold Trust Services. And I made a video about a month ago and I'll put it up in the cards. Uh, the World Gold Council keeps peddling a GLD ETF. If they were really a friend of gold, they would uh, get the public uh, to uh, think about buying real physical gold, not this rubbish <laughs> or, uh, yeah, this uh, instrument that tracks the price of gold but doesn't actually give you the ownership. Uh, it's not surprising the, the present CEO of the World Gold Council, uh, he's on the board of some kind of uh, committee at the ba Bank of England, and he's worked in the city of London uh, for many decades, which oversees the performance of the trustee, which is Bank of New York Mellon, so another Wall Street too big to fail. The trust seeks to reflect the price performance of gold bullion by holding gold bars and issuing shares backed by their holdings of physical metal. The gold bars are held in HSBC's vault in London and shares are sold in baskets of 100,000. So yeah, <laughs> you have to have a basket of 100,000 shares. I think uh, right now it's over $18 million worth uh, if you wanna get uh, your gold redeemed. The ETFs marketed by State Street, where most investors are confused about GLD, though, is about redemption. Even though GLD is physically backed, ordinary investors can't just go to London and redeem their bullion. Only authorized participants are allowed to create or redeem shares. Authorized participants are registered broker dealers or other securities market participants which have entered into agreements with the trustee and the sponsor and uh, drum roll brrr, you probably know who these are uh, these include major wall street names like citibank goldman sachs morgan stanley jp morgan chase bank of america merrill lynch among others do you really want to be dealing with these counterparties when everything hits the fan which I think will very soon, you will have no access to anything. And uh, I'll come to uh, the uh, prospectus in a minute, and I'll, I'll show you something very interesting that they've added on to the prospectus. Allowing them to deposit either gold or shares in exchange for the other at unallocated accounts until the operation is completed so here's the kicker from this article. Regular shareholders have no rights of redemption and the gold is not required to be insured by the trust, which is not liable for loss, damage, theft, nor fraud. Shares are bought in the open market only after authorized participants decide to place or sell them. Therefore, a retail investor doesn't actually own gold but an asset that is backed by gold and represents a certain quantity of the yellow metal. Skeptics have raised doubts over the trust's management of its physical gold with questions over how much is actually held. HSBC, the custodian, is very secretive regarding its vault. Early this year, CNBC's Bob Pisani was allowed to see the vault only after surrendering his cell phone and taken in a van with blacked out windows to an undisclosed location. Once in the vault, Pisani held up a gold bar and explained they were all numbered and registered. Astutely, Zero Hedge noted the bar Pisani held up was missing from the current bar list, fueling further speculation and skepticism. Tucson defends GLD, well, he's part of the World Gold Council, who works along with the bullion bank. And they're pushing this as gold, right? And it isn't. Tucson defends GLD by noting they're regulated by the SEC. We're filing 10 Qs on a regular basis, he said, then added. Also think the world's largest hedge funds take their due diligence seriously, referring to investments in GLD by world-renowned 
hedge fund managers like John Paulson and George Soros, among others. That may be so, but they've got billions invested in GLD. They will be able to redeem. But you, uh, a small investor, uh, if you put $1,000, five, ten thousand, fifty, even a hundred thousand, you won't be able to get your gold, or you won't be able to get any gold because it's not your gold anyway. Another major criticism of GLD, which pertains to the whole ETF industry, is that it distorts prices and underlying markets by offering on-demand liquidity to investors while they're in some cases based on much less liquid underlying assets, according to a report by the Financial Stability Board. GLD has professionalized gold investment and positioned gold within the menu of viable asset classes response to Sun. Well, I'm not sure what he means by that. Gold has been viable as money for thousands of years. Uh, then again, he works for the World Gold Council, and they're not real friends of gold, I would say. Gold ETFs have expanded the investor base and the overall market, explained Tucson, but they still represent less than 10% of total demand for gold. I don't think it has affected the price in the market. I'm just going to skip to the conclusion here of Mr. Fontevecchia. So this is what he says at the end. Owning GLD is clearly not the same as owning physical gold. It just serves different purposes. GLD allows investors to play the physical metal without facing the underlying costs and logistical problems, but it doesn't entitle one to an actual amount of gold. GLD helped make the market more democratic. Not sure what he means by that. The democratic is... Uh, being able to buy a gold coin or a gold bar or a silver bar, uh, I'm not sure what it means by that, by being more democratic. It's uh, just a silly comment, I would say, to a certain extent, but also injected liquidity, thus fueling further price volatility. Well, that's what they want, volatility. They don't want people to think that gold is money. They want people to see it as volatile and risky. No matter what Tucson or anyone else says, there will always be skeptics. But as long as gold maintains its trajectory, GLD will continue to thrive. So there you go. Yeah, it might be thriving, GLD, but it's not real gold. So now I wanted to just show you the uh, prospectus. And by the way, I'm going to put the link to the Forbes article below in the description. I'm going to put the link to the prospectus of GLD in the description. Unfortunately, I don't have a link for the Wall Street Journal article. You're gonna have to screen uh, shoot that article. You can pause my video. So the prospectus says it all. It's uh, over 30 pages. It's about 32 pages of reading. And, and I'd say you really need someone with a legal background to understand all this, or you might be reading this for, for days, trying to really figure out what it means. but I think Mr. Fontevecchia went through the prospectus. So I'm not going to go through this prospectus again. But one thing I would say, and it's in bold letters, uh, it, it says here, neither the Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC nor any state securities commission has approved or disapproved of the securities offered in this prospectus or determined if this prospectus is truthful or complete, any representation to the contrary is a criminal offense. So now I'm going to skip to page 14. And this prospectus was updated uh, in August of this year. I think it's August 18th, if I'm not mistaken. But they've even got a clause now for COVID-19. <laughs> and this is what it says. The trust, as well as the sponsor, which is the World Gold Council, and its service providers are vulnerable to the effects of public health crises, including the ongoing novel coronavirus pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. Pandemics and public health crises may cause a curtailment of business activities, which may potentially impact the ability of the sponsor and its service providers to operate. The COVID-19 pandemic or a similar public health threat could adversely impact the trust, 
by causing operating delays and disruptions, market disruptions, and shutdown, including as a result of government regulation and prevention measures, the COVID-19 pandemic has had and will likely continue to have serious negative effects on social, economic, and financial systems, including significant uncertainty and volatility in the financial markets. So there you go. Um, they're covering themselves. Uh, hopefully, this has shown shown to you that uh, having uh, ownership of this trust is not really having physical gold. Yes, George Soros or a big hedge fund manager managing billions of dollars might uh, be able to redeem some gold from this uh, trust, from GLD, uh, but even they could have a problem if there's a shutdown of the markets. Uh, this uh, trust is traded on the New York Stock Exchange. So if you really want to be out of the system, if you really want to have uh, nothing to do with the bankers, uh, with Wall Street, I think there's no substitute to owning the real thing. So unless you just want to uh, be exposed to the movement of the price of gold uh, and you believe that uh, the system is not fragile and you believe in the uh, trustworthiness of all these counterparties i spoke about then yeah go ahead and buy gld but uh, don't be fooled into thinking that you're going to be owning the real thing i personally have a lot more peace of mind uh, holding one of these than having exposure to an ounce of gold through GLD. So there you go. Hopefully uh, that puts the question to rest about uh, GLD uh, ETF and whether it's real gold or not. So with that, let's look at where the markets are this morning. It's 10 to 9 a.m. London. Yes, yesterday uh, gold and silver came off on the back of a very strong dollar. Uh, dollar rebounded quite a bit. One thing I would say about the dollar and the dollar index, dollar index bottomed at uh, 70.69 in 2008. Gold at the time was at a thousand. Now here we are, I don't know, around 94. I haven't checked exactly where dollar index is right now. And gold is all, almost at 1900. Yes, we will see maybe short term moves in the price of gold. Uh, related to the uh, dollar index that inverse relationship uh, of gold and the dollar or the dollar index is really breaking apart mainly because um, all fiat currencies not just the dollar are sinking versus gold so i wouldn't be concerned about these moves uh, the volatility in the price paper price of gold right now we've got spot gold at 1896 it's up about five dollars Range has been 1882 to 1898.50. Silver is up just three cents at 24.16. Range has been 2385 to 2430. The Dow future is up 72, 28,742. S&P up a third of a percent. S&P future at 35.23. NASDAQ 100 futures up almost two thirds of a percent at 12,150. So the fiat currencies, we got sterling down almost half a percent at 128.85. We've got the euro down slightly, 117.37. And we've got the dollar down slightly versus the yen at 105.42. Dollars down slightly as well against the Chinese yuan at 673.68. WTI crude is down two thirds of a percent at 40.14. So the 10 year yield has uh, come off from the highs we saw last week near 0.8. Right now it's unchanged from yesterday at 0.72%. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.